Right guys, this is a nice FRQ on rotation. Uh, a thin uniform disk of mass M radius R has a string wrapped around its edge and attached to the ceiling, the bottom of the disk, da da da. So they're just saying bottom of the disk is at 3R, this is R, this is M, and the moment of inertia is half MR square. So on the circle, we have to draw the forces. Basically, we need to draw FBD, all right? So uh, it's pretty straightforward. I know, we know that there is a gravity obviously acting on this guy. Uh, which is pointing downwards. So we're gonna say that is right at the center pointing downwards. And uh, at this point, we have a tension pointing upwards, right? So we have a tension pointing upwards. And um, I think it makes sense because if you read further, when released from rest, the disc falls, right? And the string unwinds. So obviously if it falls, then the downward arrow must be longer than the upward arrow. So we are gonna say that this is FG and uh, looks a little longer as well. And this is FT. Now they are saying that uh, the tension is FT, gravitation is FG. So which of the following correctly relates FT and FA as the disc fall? That's pretty straightforward. Obviously, if it is falling, that makes sense that the acceleration is downwards, which means that FG minus FT must be positive, which means that FG must be greater than FT, which is this one, right? FG is greater than FT. Over here, we want to find uh, the acceleration of the disk as it falls and the answer should be in terms of NR, MR and physical constants. All right, so I think I already have one equation that FG minus FT is equal to MA, right? That's the F net is equal to MA. Now I'm gonna find the torque equation because there is only one guy that is responsible for torque, right? And that is tension. Gravity cannot provide torque but is, because it is acting at the center, so it won't really provide any torque. Um, this will provide torque, so what is the torque equation? Torque is force times distance, as in this one, R times sine of angle, which is 90 degree between these two. And we know that torque is equal to I alpha, right? So FT R sine 90 is 1. I is half m r square and alpha is alpha. One of the r is cancelled from both the sides. So f t is half m r alpha. And this f t I'm going to plug in over here. Right. So this is going to look like, and by the way, what is f g? f g is just m g. So m g minus half m r alpha is equal to m a. And by the way, there is a beautiful relationship between acceleration and alpha because alpha is something like this and acceleration is downwards, of course, and we know that acceleration is alpha r. So you're going to use that and if you see carefully, this is r alpha or alpha r, which can be replaced with a, right? So I'm going to say that mg minus half ma is equal to ma. Uh, adding half ma both the sides. So ma plus half ma is three half ma. And by the way, m and m is gone from both the sides, which means that g is equal to three over two a, which means that two g is equal to three a, which means that acceleration is two g over three. Well, that's a pretty nice number. Uh, that is the acceleration. Derive an expression for the time it takes for the disc to reach the ground, okay? So it will reach the ground when this bottom most point will come over here, right? In other words, the bottom most point travels a three hour distance. And we already have the acceleration, by the way, because the acceleration, although is of center of mass, but that linear acceleration belongs to all the, you know, all the um, uh, points on the disc. So this point is also falling down with 2g over 3. So I think I'm going to use uh, equation of motion, uh, probably the second one, which says that s is equal to v initial times t plus half a t square, because s is 3r, v initial is 0 because it is released, uh, half a is 2g over 3, and t square is just t square that we need to find. So these two are gone. I'm left with 3r is equal to g over 3t square. Multiply 3 both the sides, so 9r is equal to gt square. Uh, divide both sides with, well, 9 and g looks similar. But yeah, 9r over g is t square. 
Okay, I'm going to take square root on both the sides. So t is equal to square root of 9r over g. The square root of 9 is 3, right? So 3 root r over g. That should be the time. Derive an expression for the rotational kinetic energy as it reaches the ground. All right, I can do that. Uh, clearly, this is based on energy conservation. So when it hits the ground, it is rotating with some omega and falling with some v. Uh, and I'm going to conserve the uh, energy for the center of mass. So this is where the center of mass is. And for my potential, I'm going to take the ground as the reference. So initially, since the object is at rest, there is no kinetic, but there is potential, of course. Uh, can you help me with the height here? What is the height of the center from the ground? I think that's 3R and another R. So that's 4R, right, if we agree on that. So M, G, H plus zero, because there is zero kinetic. At this point, what is the potential? It's M, G and obviously this is just r so it's mgr plus kinetic is half mv square and uh, i mean translational kinetic is half mv square and rotational kinetic is i omega half i omega square okay uh, 4 mgr minus mgr is 3 mgr so 3 mgr is equal to half m well v doesn't have any job here because i'm i'm looking for k rotational so again, there is a relationship between V and omega that V is omega R, right? So V is replaced by omega R and half I is already half MR square given in the question and this is omega square. So 3 MGR is equal to half M omega square R square plus one fourth M omega square R square. Half plus one fourth is I think three fourth. Three fourth M omega square R square is equal to three M G R. M and M is gone. Three and three is gone. So I'm left with four G R is equal to omega square R square. And what is the rotational kinetic energy formula? K rotational is half I omega square. So it will be half I is half MR square and omega square is already 4gr so that's what i'm gonna i mean uh, sorry omega square r square so let me find omega square sorry about that so 4gr over r square is omega square obviously one r can be cancelled we we'll cancel it here so i hope you understand half remains as it is i is this portion and omega square is now here which is 4gr over r square 2 and 2 is 4 4 and 4 is gone uh, r square and r square is gone. Huh, that's fun. We are just left with m g r. Well, who would have thought that? This is our answer. Are we done? Oh, yeah, no, there's more. Okay, now this is now a typical AP physics C because it involves, uh, you know, integration and all. A very narrow wedge is cut out from a thin uniform disk of mass m. Da, 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 or is that da, 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 da. Okay, so a wedge is cut, its linear mass density is given as mr over 25 r square, where r is the distance from the step towards the wedge. They are asking us to use integration to derive an expression for rotational inertia of the wedge about the tip. I know that the formula for, uh, uh, in all such cases, when we have integration, right? So we start by using that uh, that formula for the moment of inertia of a point mass, which is dmr square. Uh, uh, I mean, it is mr square, but dm because that's an elemental mass, right? And di because it's an elemental moment of inertia. And dm has a formula of lambda dr, right? So lambda dr and r square remains as it is. And what is lambda? There you go. So lambda is m small r square over 25 capital R square. R square is as it is here. Sorry, it's not m r square, it's mr. So this r square is written here and dr and then I integrate on both the sides. So I will get the moment of inertia. Um, integration bounds will be from zero to capital R because we are going all the way till the um, till the r, right? That's what I mean here till the maximum, I mean the total radius. So m over 25 r square is a constant. Uh, r times r square becomes r cube, r cube integration from 0 to r. Uh, 
and what is the r cube integration i believe that's r to the 4 over 4 with the bounds of 0 to capital r and if i put the bounds that's going to look like m over 25 r square times r raised to 4 over 4 um, r raised to 4 over r square is just r square m remains as it is and 25 times 4 is 100 so it's 1 over 100 m r square and finally uh, derive an expression for the rotational kinetic uh, rotational inertia of the modified disc that's the disc after the wedge is taken out so it's as simple because see moment of inertia is a scalar quantity right so all you have to do is i left is equal to i total minus the i of the wedge or the or the or the part that has been taken off right i total is given in the question half mr square i cut is given in the uh, we just found it was what sorry 1 over 100 uh, 1 over 100 mr square and that's about it uh, take the common denominator is 100 this will become what 50 mr square minus mr square 50 minus 1 is definitely 49 so answer is 49 over 100 m r square